New documentary on PBS takes a look at the civil rights movement in Mississippi. American Reckoning explores the unsolved 1967 murder of a local NAACP leader. It uses rare archival footage to tell the stories of violence and the groups that fought against it. Here's a preview. Nearly 1,000 Negroes are marching through the center of Natchez. Martin Luther King's approach did not work in Natchez, Mississippi. They met armed terror with armed resistance. The Till Act held the promise that we might get to the bottom of some of these cases that had never been solved. Testing the bomb slaying of civil rights leader Wallace Jackson. I relived this thing over and over again, hoping for some justice. Co-director of the documentary, Brad Lichtenstein, and executive producer Don Porter join me now. Welcome to you both. Uh, Don, let me start with you. Um, if you could begin by explaining to us who Warlist Jackson Sr. was and how his murder impacted the fight for civil rights. Sure. Um... You know, one of the things I love about this story so much is it reflects the experience of so many ordinary Americans who did their part in the civil rights movement. These are people who, until now, you may not know their names, um, but their contributions were significant. So Warless Jackson was a father. Um, he uh, was a factory worker. And he was also a member of the, the Deacons for Defense in Natchez, Mississippi. Um, the Deacons, uh, Brad can explain more about the Deacons for Defense, um, but essentially he was an ordinary citizen who wanted to protect his family, um, but also wanted to um, work for rights for all uh, people in the South and in Natchez specifically. And Brad, the documentary speaks to family members of not only Warless Jackson, but other black Americans killed during the civil rights movement. How are they working to get justice for what happened more than 50 years ago? Sure, well, you know, the impetus for this documentary was actually John Lewis, who Don and I both have been very fortunate to have had relationships with. And he's the one who pointed me to the Emmett Till Act, which uh, reopened over 150 cases. And um, I'm sad to say that none of those uh, reinvestigations have resulted in indictments in these cases. So in a sense, really, we're left with a question of, you know, what is justice? Um, John Lewis was actually interested in a truth and reconciliation process, much like South Africa, and uh, reparations. And that was not something that was viable when he proposed the Emmett Till Act, which uh, reexamined these cases. But, you know, we can look at justice both in sharing these stories and uh, correcting the, and putting truth into the narrative of our history, but also uh, talk about reparations, talk about what we can do for uh, people like these families who have suffered uh, and for whom no one has been held accountable. So, of course, Brad, the fight for civil rights and justice has certainly changed um, since the 1960s. But in many ways, um, there are also some similar themes. And I'm wondering, while working on this documentary, Brad, were you struck by any similar themes happening today? Very much so. I mean, it really struck by how little has changed, to be honest. Um, right at the beginning of the film, we're at Willis Jackson's funeral in 1967, and a man at the funeral says, they've been killing us here for 400 years. Um, and we end that pre-title open with wake up white people before it's too late. And sad to say, we're still talking about this kind of racially motivated violence, whether it's Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd. When we first started this film, we were talking about Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin. Um, so I think that in fact, we have very far to go. Um, the one thing that we do, I think, bring out that isn't often known is that the civil rights movement uh, was a time certainly of Gandhi-inspired nonviolence through Dr. Martin Luther King, but also uh, like throughout history, it's a time when black people defended their communities and the Deacons for Defense are an organized group that exemplifies that. Yeah, I wonder, um, Don, for people who aren't familiar, can you talk just a little bit about that group? Because for some people, this will be the very first time they've ever heard of this. You know, this is, um, I, I think, one of the most revealing 
uh, parts of the documentary. And um, we're just really thrilled to bring this story to people. Um, the deacons for defense were, you know, ordinary citizens who um, committed to work with each other to save, to help their individual families and to help their communities. And they did not rule out uh, a violent response in the event that they were attacked. And, um, you know, that is significant because the story that most of us are familiar with, and as Brad says, we've both made films about Congressman John Lewis, most of us are familiar with the uh, vow of nonviolence that the protesters working with King and working with uh, John Lewis took. And Natchez took a different approach. I and mean, you heard in the clip that they said that didn't work in Natchez. Um, Warless Jackson, who we began, you know, the story is centered around, he, he died because a bomb was placed under his car um, as he drove from home from his work in a factory. So he was part of a group that pledged that if they were met with violence, um, they would not rule out a violent response. Um, before we let you go, Dawn, I want to get your thoughts on something that we're seeing play out um, sort of politically now where you have various civil rights organizations looking at this issue of voting rights and um, really calling on politicians to do more to protect voting rights. So despite U.S. intelligence agencies and bipartisan election officials across the country saying 2020 was the most secure election in American history, a number of states, as you know, have made moves in the name of election integrity. Don, how has that concept defined this current fight for voting rights? You know, there's never been a greater misnomer than uh, certain conservative Republicans uh, turn, you know, describing their actions as in election integrity. I have made many films about voting rights, including following Congressman Lewis in the last year of his life as he fought to protect the right to vote. We've seen some really egregious examples of willfully ignoring the targeted uh, discrimination against uh, usually communities of color. Um, everything from voter ID to, um, you know, other targeted examples of trying to literally prevent people from exercising their franchise. And so I would uh, just, just say um, we have studied the issue. Uh, Stacey Abrams in Georgia, so many other voting rights activists have studied this issue. And if people really want to be patriotic, then they should have nothing to fear from every American being able to vote. We should be making it easier for people to vote, not harder. All right, Brad Lichtenstein and Don Porter. The documentary is American Reckoning. Thank you both for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much.